So we are live. So normally you should share in different, I assume you will be sharing in different, uh, in different stuff, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll be, I, I, have, I haven't downloaded the first one yet because I've been busy all day, but they'll be going on different platforms. Yeah. Oh no, I'm, I'm, don't even worry. Absolutely. That's fine. Um, I'm just putting a banner. Okay. Equipping the saints with the word of God um, for the work of God. This is a 10 story, so I put it there for us so that we we can have yeah. that. Okay. So I suppose we're live now, but I just wanted to try one more thing to see if it's uh, live on, you know, the different pages. At, at the moment, I'm sure we're live on YouTube. Um. So just want to double check quickly, brother. Yeah. Today we're talking about discipleship, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so in the morning. So are we gonna are we gonna come back? Like go off this one and then come back. Say it again. Are we are we going are we gonna come off this stream and then come back again, Joseph? Or are we? No, no, no. We stay here now. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. We st we stay here now, brother. Uh, I'm just checking one more thing, and then we we can go. We can start. Um, I'm just checking because normally it says that it would be it would be sharing on different platforms. So that's why I'm trying to check to see if it's okay. Um, you want me to check? I can go on Facebook and see. Yeah. I'm on your page. Yeah. I can't see uh, anything. That I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I can't see that either. So that's that's one of the things I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking on YouTube to see if it's live on YouTube. I'm sure it should be live on YouTube. If, yeah, I'm sure it is if you press it in. I'm just going now. Yeah, we definitely live on YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, what I'm going to do, I'm sharing that on uh, on Facebook now, just in case. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I will do it, but I'm sharing on YouTube on my Facebook page now. From there, if you want, from YouTube, even you can share. You can pick it up from my from the channel and share on your Facebook page if you want to. I, how do I do uh, that, bro? Uh, you know, if you are you able, uh, do you have another screen where, where you can access the, the YouTube channel? No, no, uh, okay, don't worry. You are on my you are on my Facebook page a few minutes, a few seconds ago. Mm. If you go back there, we will be on it now, okay? Like, so you can share it from there if you want to, okay? Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. um, so wow. Hey man, I can see it. Are we there? <laughs> yeah, I'm sharing yeah. it now, brother. So you can share it just to sh just take a bit, a few minutes, and share it to yeah as many before we start. While we we yeah, while I hope people will be joining us as well. Yeah. Sure so we're giving them this a uh, couple of minutes to uh, to to join us. This is precious, precious. Amen. I've shared it on my mm -hmm. thing. I'm going to send it to uh, mm -hmm. Messenger now. I've shared it on my main thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, share to a group. Okay, so that goes there. Okay, last one, share to a page. 
Gospel.tv. Okay. Okay. I've shared Are we good? About, I've shared it to about 100 people, bro. Yeah. No worries. Thank you very much, uh, Ashedi, as well. So, brother, thank you again, brother Jason Burns. Burns. <laughs> thank you for, uh, again, for this. Uh, this is part two, people. Uh, brethren, we uh, this is getting serious. And um, tonight we're talking, uh, this is part two. We're going to probably summarize, Jason, if you don't mind, a little bit of yesterday. For those who missed yesterday, they can find it. It's still on our Facebook page. You can find it on Gospel Rock TV, YouTube channel. And uh, if you missed yesterday, we talked about worship. Uh, it was an introduction to um, co uh, discipleship and missions. And... Um, so we talked about worship and Jason put an emphasis on the fact that your view of God really matters in how you take on the mission. If your God is small and a self-centered God, you will see him like that and you will not see the need to go up, to go into missions. But if your God is the God who owns everything, who said all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, therefore go and make disciples, if that's your view, if your view is what the Lord has done in your life, if your view is, no, I'll just let Jason continue on that one. <laughs> no, it, it was good. It, I was talking about how great God is and the need to see how yeah. the glory of God and the majesty of God, that there are trillions mm -hmm. of stars in the universe, he upholds it. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my mind, I thought it was good how we complemented each other because in my mind, I was thinking mm -hmm. of leaders you brought it back a bit. You said, wait, wait a minute, Jay. Let's get the some here that might not fully understand what we mean when we say a great mm -hmm. God. And we, then mm -hmm. we talked about entering into yeah. the kingdom, knowing God in a relationship. And we talked a bit, just a little bit about discipleship, about the need to, to mm -hmm. uh, love Jesus and follow Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, which we didn't get into too much because we were going yeah. to do this today. But So a great God, how to mm -hmm. connect with God, and uh, mm -hmm. a little bit how to walk with God. Absolutely. So we talked about it and uh, it was important for us to introduce because uh, and we, we mentioned the fact that because many uh, didn't probably get the encounter with the risen Lord, because many have been struggling to, depending on how they were saved, depending on the, um, the, the emphasis of discipleship and how the, the encounter with the Lord was vital for them to have that fire and to keep that fire burning. Because at some point, we will not have Bibles. At some point, we will not have seminars. At some point, we will not have anything but the Holy Spirit and the fire inside of us. And at some point, we're going to have to step out and do what the Lord Jesus has said. So it's like when we strip everything away, we strip the buildings, we strip everything away, will we still go on the mission? Will we still go to our neighbors? Will we still go the extra mile where mm -hmm. Christianity really starts? And that was the, 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 the thing that we talked about yesterday. And um, guys, I'm still very passionate about it. And so if you missed yesterday, please just go on, on the YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. You will see the message still there. And and I pray, guys, uh, I see there's a time is short. Uh, hey, what's up, guys? I thank you, Bonnie. God bless you. Strong Tower Fellowship, Truth Seekers. Hallelujah. Lita, welcome. We thank you. Um, any comments, please drop your comments. Ask, a qu ask us questions. We are willing to uh, answer. Brother, I want to put a disclaimer first. Mm. What we're doing right now, this is not something we send to people. Fancy going on a mission? Fancy becoming a Christian? Fancy uh, traveling? No. <laughs> this is, you have to, <laughs> you have to be called. Mm. You have to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the call mm. to Jesus is a call to death. It's a call to die to self. So mm. he can live his life in you. So this is not something you fancy. And not everybody is called to go out. Some people, like we said yesterday, there are some people who are called to go. God will make a way for them. Yeah. There are some people who are called to support. 
God will provide for them to support. There are some people who are called to pray and to intercede. God will put a burden in their heart to do it. Go ahead, brother. So today we're talking about discipleship. And my brother, Jason, as the Holy Spirit is with us, take it away. Well, I think, uh, yeah, th this is not 10 steps to have a nice life. We're, we're, Hallelujah. We're, we're, this is 10 steps to death. Yes. An abundant life in, in the sense that we want to go and be the people that God wants us to be in our generation. So it's going to be painful sometimes, this series that we're doing. But mm -hmm. in order to, to gain blessing and encouragement and to grow, we need that pain. So some of the things mm -hmm. we're going to say will challenge ourselves, but will mm -hmm. also challenge you. Um, if we turn to Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Mm -hmm. Luke 6, uh, chapter 6. 6 verse 46 and do you want to read it or me or Joseph? absolutely i can I, I turn to it my brother thank you luke chapter 6 verse 46 ready yeah read guys the reason why we give you the scriptures uh rock study god bless you uh i think this is our brother kieran the reason why we give the scripture is just so that many people will know we're not here to give our opinion we have to give the word of god because we all come under not a title we call we all come under the word of god the word amen. of god is our amen. we submit to that word amen amen so in luke chapter 6 verse 46. 46 it says but why do you call me lord lord and do not do and not do the things which i say just one verse brother just that one verse to start with, yeah. Um, Absolutely. So I repeat that again. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Go uh, ahead, bro. One writer said, Lord doesn't mean today what it meant mm -hmm. when Jesus was was around and when he said it. Back mm -hmm. then, it meant maximum, maximum authority, mm -hmm. the first one above everything else, the mm -hmm. owner of all creation. People in the streets would walk and they would say, the soldiers would say, G uh, Caesar is Lord. And you had to reply, yes, the Lord is Caesar. But the Christian says, no, in the time of Jesus, no, Jesus Christ is Lord. So we have to get back this understanding of the Lordship of Christ. He is, he is uh, that idea of the reverence, the respect, maximum authority that when we give our lives to Jesus, it's not just a case of getting our sins forgiven. We're going from darkness into the kingdom of God, and we're coming under the kingship, the lordship of Christ. Hallelujah. This is so important. Uh, and, I, and I believe, guys, this is foundational to what we're talking about. When we talk about your view of God, your view of Lord, now... Yeah, now live. So, so basically, I'm going to add this, my brother, if you permit. Yeah, yeah. Number one, in the natural, as in the, as human being, as pe some people in position, we are in Great Britain. When you say Lord, a Lord is an owner. A Lord generally owns the land. All the Lords in England that I know of, they mm -hmm. have lands. You know what I'm saying? They own something. When you said Lord, he's the owner. When you said Lord Jesus Christ, he owns you. When he owns you, he makes the decision. He decides. He leads you. He guides you. This is, this is how foundational it is, number one. So he owns you. Now, the Lord in England owns territories. Now, you are the body of Christ. You are the temple of the most high God. Your body is the territory that King Jesus reigned upon. Mm -hmm. So he has to be Lord and King in your life. Mm -hmm. So if that's so, if he owns you, then he owns everything you have. Then he owns your vision. He owns your, your faith. He owns everything. Mm -hmm. So he must be Lord because we are not. Now, when you understand that, Every tiny little thought that pops in our heads of independence, every tiny little thought that pops in our head about self this and self that, we need to lay down on the, at the altar. 
we need to do Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Because this is the essence of what we're talking about. Mm. If we can't get that, it would be hard for us to get the other part that we're going to be talking about. Because Christianity is not natural. Christianity is supernatural. Mm -hmm. And the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus is the Christian living in us. And he wants to do what the Father tells him to do. So if he can do nothing apart from what the Father says, now what happened? You now is the same. You can do nothing apart from what he says. Hallelujah. Go ahead, brother. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, if you just go to Acts chapter 4, verse Amen. 19, 19 mm -hmm. to 20. Mm -hmm. And uh, while you get that, I'll, I'll just mention this, is that yeah, um, we've invented a fifth gospel. We got, <laughs> we got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then we got another gospel which we've invented and that gospel is pick and mix we like the bits we like then we leave out bits and what that means is we we've made god in we've made jesus into a, like a, a genie lamp where we just rub it for our blessing but if we look <laughs> at this passage in Acts chapter, chapter 4, verse 19 to 20 they've just been arrested uh they've been let out but you don't hear them praying this oh jesus uh let me out. Oh, Jesus, I want a comfortable life. All they're thinking about when they've been arrested and they're let out and, and they're being persecuted, all they're thinking about is glorifying the Lord. And that's the point what I want to say is that we've got to get, we, we need a nuclear bomb in our brain where we've got to get out of this man-centered thinking about it's all about my needs and what I want and start thinking about the Lord Jesus and, and what he wants. And this chapter, this whole chapter, but we'll only look at two verses, Shows you in the midst of persecution, the church is not thinking about themselves, but the Lord. So shall I read verse 19? Yes, yes. Verse 19 and 20, please, Joseph. Verse Pete, but Peter, Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge. <laughs> Hallelujah. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Amen. So if you read that whole chapter, I'll just give it for you to go and study, folks. You'll mm -hmm. find that they're, they're being persecuted. The church is praying for them. But you'll, you'll find that there's nothing about self-pity. Oh, we're in prison. Oh, they're in prison. It's all about Jesus and glorifying him, you know. And, and everything in the church, if you notice, all our songs, it's about I. I, 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 you know, our prayers, it's I want this, I want that. Uh, even all the arrangement of the church is about how it makes us comfortable. We don't think, is this bringing glory to God? What we're doing in the church, is it bringing glory to God? Is my prayers God-centered? Uh, is my needs God-centered? But it's all I. And in this chapter, it was not I. It was all about Christ in the midst of persecution. Absolutely. And uh, brother... I really want to put an emphasis on it because it's very subtle. You see, it's very subtle. We don't really know we do that because we seem to be doing it in the name of Jesus. Jesus is like the footnote, you see. So we don't really realize how subtle it is because we think the I, I, I don't really matter because it's in the, in the church building and it's in the name of Jesus. But there's a subtlety about the deception of the enemy. Mm -hmm. The enemy don't mind you being religious. He doesn't mind you going to church. He doesn't mind you uh, praying and fasting and doing all of that. All As long as you do it privately, as long as you do it in your own comfort. Mm -hmm. But he knows if you step out with the light that is in you, you will dispel the darkness. And the enemy don't want that. Mm -hmm. So your house, your family, your building, that's the new kind of religion, okay? It's just me, myself, my family, my church, and that's it. But now God comes and says, look, I need you out there. I need to, you to shine the light out there because stop putting your light under the bushel. Stop mm. putting your light. Shine your light. Where? Out there. <laughs> and as I will say this, brother. Church starts after church stops. Mm -hmm. After Sunday finishes, church starts outside the building mm, mm, because mm. you see 
in church, so-called in church, in the building, by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The word we receive is like the, re the, the understanding, the revelation. But that needs to be applied in the circumstances that is out there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I use it in a, in a very carnal way. Put it this way, the word is like a seed, it's like the sperm. The sperm is looking for an egg. Mm -hmm. And when it, it meets the egg, the egg is a situation on forgiveness, mission, you know, love, the enemy, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. When the sperm meet that egg, life comes out of it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're talking about. You can't receive divine revelation without a place where you have to impart that, revel that revelation. And mm. this is what's been happening, brother. The people go and they go into church and they fight. Mm, mm, mm. They do not spend the word that they listen to. You yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. And this is what I'm talking. This is what we're talking about. So I pray for my people to go out and be challenged. Discipleship is not something you learn in a classroom. Discipleship is not something you learn in church. Come on now, brother. You talk to me. Talk to me about it. Amen. If you turn to uh Luke 19, mm -hmm. Zacchaeus, yeah. Luke 19, uh, 1 to 10. Yeah. And uh, right. I'm just going to add a comment here. Uh, just have a few people commenting, basically, Song Tower. Uh, while you find the scripture, rock solid. Uh, bless okay. you, brother. We need this big time and on and on. My boss is on at the moment. I'm going to just put a cheeky thing to you. Please find the script. Go, go on the scripture for me. Thank you. Luke 19, 1 to 10, it says, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief <clears throat> among the publicans. And he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and, and could not for the press, because he was a little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. When they saw it, they all murmured and saying that he has gone to the guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken my thing from any man, my false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said, to, said unto him this day, Salvations come to thy house, to this house, for as much as also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. I just want to say two things there. Number yeah. one, our Lord said, Zacchaeus come down. It, there was no like, Zacchaeus didn't go, oh, I, I, I want to watch your TV. I want to go to the gym. I want to uh, just, uh, uh, you know, I, I want to just do my car. No, there was no arguments. It was straight away. You have to give, you, you have to submit to the Lordship straight away. And secondly, mm -hmm. it shows true repentance. A true, yeah. true spiritual life. He, mm -hmm. he, he gets rid of his old life. Uh, all the things that he's done wrong, he makes restitution, showing true repentance. Mm -hmm. So those are two elements in, in discipleship. I, you know, are you giving ifs and buts? So I can't do this. I can't do that. Excuses. Uh, making excuses. Jesus is Lord. He says now. Now. And then secondly, mm -hmm. true repentance. Over to you. Absolutely. Um, one of the things um, is that Repentance is not preached enough anymore yeah. because we think it's a one-time thing. No. The, the longer you walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> the, the, you will repent almost on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You will get back in, 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 in line as, as often as possible. You will have to turn around. You will have to cease from doing your own will to doing his will. That's true repentance, and that will help you to bear fruit. One thing I want to say to my, my people, you can't learn discipleship, like we said, in a building. You need to go on the field. You need to go out. You need to get tested on your street. You need to get tested by your neighbors. You need to get tested. Is you learn it when you, while you're practicing. You see, what we do here, guys, we want to, we want to let you know. You have to leave what you preach. You see, we we are talking 
what we're talking about is not because we qualify. It's that we have a God who qualifies those who are willing to go. Isaiah, 1, verse, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 says, If you are willing, mm -hmm. if you are obedient and willing, willing and obedient, you shall eat the fruit of the land. The basic thing about discipleship and missions is to do with being willing to be used by God. Mm -hmm. Because he's the one who will qualify you. You don't need a certificate for this. You mm. need experience with the Holy Spirit who will take you wherever he needs you to go. So the, the reason why I, I really wanted to put an emphasis on that. The mm. longer you are with God, the more you will repent. But repentance that is not condemnation, it's conviction. Because mm. every time you go, oh, my Lord, there are, there are body again. Oh, my Lord, I just messed up again. I just had this. You know what? You grow more in the Lord and in his service more than ever. You will never be made right outside anything else except in the experiential thing with God. Mm, mm. You know, my wife never been to Africa. In 2005, I took her there with my two children. They were very young. She never cried like that before. She mm. never knew the, reali the reality of Christianity. Brother, when we came back, she said, let's sell our house. I told her, calm down, calm down, calm <laughs> down. Yeah, no, that was that was it. She yeah. found out that what we were complaining about is pathetic. Yeah, yeah. And that cannot be learned in church. Yeah. It cannot yeah. be learned watching uh, poor people on TV. You have, you have to go there. You have to smell it. You have to see it. You have to touch it. Mm -hmm. and compassion will you will be moved by compassion just like jesus go ahead brother amen um we turn to uh luke chapter 18 uh verse 18 to 23 the rich young ruler mm -hmm. amen and, um 18 to 23 uh, chapter 18 verse 18 to 23 you want me to read it or are you reading it yeah please i'm just sending a message yeah go ahead a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these I have kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, You lackest one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, that thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. When Jesus wow. saw that he was very sorrowful, he said unto him, said, How hardly shall they have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it's easier for a camel to go through the uh, needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. I, I just wanted to bring that up. Is yes, that, please, yeah. Uh, two things there. Uh, one is self righteousness. He said he thought he said he'd obeyed everything, and the Lord had pushed him to show that no, that you 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 are a sinner. That that there is something that you're holding on to. But for <laughs> him, he was the the rich young ruler. He was trusting in his wealth and not God, and 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 the Lord was pushing him to try to show that he, he had to trust in the Lord and not in his wealth. And yeah. uh, but we're all in some in many ways. Many of us, we're all trusting in something, some stuff, whatever it is. It might be our comfort, our bank balance, our job, our retirement, our wife. But what stuff is it that you're trusting on, holding on to? You've got to let it go and put God first. Mm. Absolutely. You have to let it go. I, <laughs> you know why you have to let it go? You can't even keep it. <laughs> you can't keep it. That's why you have to let it go. Because... What's the point of holding on to stuff? We're never satisfied with those stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. The reputation, you're never satisfied because they're 10 a penny. You know, <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. whatever you have, there's nothing you under the sun. You have a house, you have a car. None of that is anything except anything becomes something when it's put in the hands of God. When mm -hmm. he uses it, he transforms what you have. And that's the thing. You have a house, that's fine. Are you willing to entertain strangers? Yes. You know, you have a car, good. Are you able to help somebody who needs a car? Are you able to take somebody the extra mile? 
Christianity starts when there's pain in the offering. Christianity mm. starts when there's a pain in what you have to do. Christianity mm. starts when it's getting you out of your comfort zone. Mm. Mm. There mm. has to be a time where you can, it's not about you anymore. Christianity is in, your, in Europe, my brother. It's all about me. And sometimes it's all about me in a, in a very, it, it doesn't look sinful. Mm, mm. We just don't understand the depth of deception of self-centeredness. Yeah, yeah. You have been hurt. That's right. You have been hurt. But guess what? You're still alive. Have I gone through what you've gone through? No. Do I even have a clue what you've gone through? No. But there's one who knows. Jesus mm. Christ. Mm. He has suffered everything you got you suffered. So now, if you get to know him, now you know what he's able to do. Now you know he delivered you from darkness to light. Now you know who he is. No matter what happened to you in the past, it's too late for the devil to kill you. Mm. So now mm. you need to move forward. Now mm. you need to respond to the call. Now a Christian cannot be bored. There's always something to do. Mm. If you think outside yourself, there's people to pray for. There's people to intercede for. There are things to do to give. Look for something around you. Look for a, mm. an orphanage. Mm. Look for a charity organization. Look for something mm. to mm. share the light. This is not about performance. It's about compassion. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, I'm too passionate about this. You're okay, brother. You're okay. I just know. And you know, you know something, brother? Before we continue, for those who missed out yesterday, I just wanted to go back because they don't really know how long we since how long we know we know each other. But I want you to re repeat to some of the people so that you'll do it a few times, that you were living Nicely practicing your Christianity in Middleton and then God called you to Ghana. Can you take two minutes to tell us a bit what's, what happened to you in Ghana? Well, basically, those who know me, I like my creature comforts. I like my steak. I like my fish and chips. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I basically, I'm the worst missionary on the planet, guys. I mean, I can, I, you can, if 100 people with knives and machine guns could come at me and I'll preach like a lion. I'm not fearful. But take me yeah. out of my comfort zone, me, away from my steaks and my burgers and things, things like that. Then I'm, it's not easy. But uh, I, I prayed, like I said, for two years, and I answered the call to to Africa. And to be honest, I'm not be. I'm I'm, I'm telling you this. It's a crucifixion every day. I love being with my wife. She's the best wife ever. That's amazing. But being in Africa, it's a crucifixion daily. Racism. I'm the only white guy that I see around most of the time. So. 30% of the people, it's, they always go to me, hey, white man, what have you got for me? White man, what are you going to buy me? And Come I'll, on tell you, now. I'll tell you a little joke. I'll tell you a little joke. It, just, just for a bit of a laugh. Uh, first, first few months I get there, they go up to me, white man, what have you got for me? I say, okay, what do you want? Uh, do you want, do you want, uh, uh, I'll get you some drink, get you this. Uh, six months later, there, hey, white man, what are you going to get me? Uh, okay, uh, I'll get, uh, what do you want? I'll get you a drink. After a year, they go, Hey, white man, what have you got for me? Well, what have you got for me, brother? <laughs> I've changed it. <laughs> Getting sick of it because they keep asking me all the time. So <laughs> racism is, is difficult because 30% are racist. They just think that they call me white man and they're not respectful. Mm. Uh, and then a lot of it's apathy. They're, everybody's thinking about money. But I understand it because it, it's difficult for them, but everybody's just consumed about money, 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 money. And yeah. And it's just on their eyes every mm -hmm. step of the day because so mm -hmm. life is so tough. And mm -hmm. um, and then also, uh, I'm I, I kind of like uh, I know this is I, I don't I hope people don't take this wrongly, but it, it's very difficult to work with different kind of leaders, African leaders, because they're mm -hmm. very like chieftain orientated, uh, and it's like they'll click the fingers and things like that, and and that's very difficult to deal with. So it's not been easy, brother. Yeah, so I, I just want the people to know that right now you're based in Africa, and yeah. you 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 have um, um, Africa without borders. Is it? You have created, or you have the Lord has led has led you to uh, to 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 found this organization with the purpose of 
really bring the light and understanding and teaching and making disciples to yeah. our brothers and sisters in Africa. And yeah. I want them to know that you have a beautiful African wife and yeah. uh, she's a solid Christian. And right now she's waiting for you. You're going back in three weeks, right? I'm, I'm praying that we can get God's willing. Amen. God's willing, absolutely. And I pray for anybody who wants to know you, they can support you. Uh, just follow him, uh, Jess, Jason Byrne on Facebook. All his details will appear there. Anybody who needs more information, just inbox me. I will give you all the details that you need. Amen. Amen. Because I want my people to know that you are literally living what you speak. Because well, one of the problems we have in the in the in this 21st century, there's a lot of brethren who are in the West, preaching in the West. And uh, to be honest, I even have to be honest about this. A lot of Africans came from Africa. They're in England now. They don't want to go back to Africa. And I'm thinking, in the same way in the world, a lot of intellectual Africans have left Africa to stay in Europe, and Africa needs them. But th there's no transfer of knowledge. There's no, uh, there's no equipping over there for things to be produced there i have i have a let's say we produce cocoa beans and all of that guess what it has to travel to europe be transformed into chocolate and be resold in africa double the price wow okay, can I, now can I... now oh. the same now in a, in a spiritual realm a lot of young enthusiastic young spirit filled pastors leaving africa coming to europe and guess what the light goes out the gospel goes out and then they begin to preach prosperity Go, brother. Let's, go ahead. Well, all I can say, brother, is I said, Lord, send me to Africa if that's what you want me to do. And all mm -hmm. I can say, brother, I've given my life to Africa. I'm not going there for a holiday. I'm not going there for six weeks, six months. I'm going there to die. I'm going there to die. My last breath will be in Africa because I'm giving my life for the African people that they might have the word of God and not these prophet pastors telling them to put blood on toothpaste taste it and they'll get a breakthrough i'm there to say the blood of jesus christ cleanses you and get into your bibles so i'm laying my life down for the african people whether my arms fall off whether blood comes out of my mouth whether my legs fall off i am giving my life to the people there you, you know brother do you want to explain and expand a little bit what do you mean the blood of the chicken and all of that can you just explain because i want my people to understand what you are encountering over there is far worse because over here most when you're in the west you seem to forget you think everybody is kind of at your level you don't really understand what's really going on can you just open up a little bit on that chicken blood and all of that please the, the thing is is that the Pentecostals here, the Pentecostals, you hear the blood of Christ preached, the, the Lord is lifted up and the Bible is taught in, in a lot of churches, Pentecostal churches. But over there, it, it, it's Pentecostal in name. Everybody's jumping up and down and they're all uh, casting out demons and doing miracles. But the reality behind the scenes, a lot of people will go to the village and contact, not just the pastor in the church, but they'll go and contact what is called a prophet pastor. And they'll only think they can get a real breakthrough if they contact the prophet pastor. So they go to the village, the prophet pastor will say things like, uh, kill a chicken, this is normal, kill a chicken, get the chicken blood, uh, get some um, toothpaste, mix it with that, shampoo, anything, crazy stuff, mix it, taste it, and you're gonna get a breakthrough. And, and they're doing crazy things like this, and this is normal, this is normal. <clears throat> and if you say anything, to a, mm -hmm. a, a Ghanaian pastor, most of them, not all of them, but most of them will rebuke you and say, no, this is mm -hmm. godly, this is spiritual. And I'm wow. thinking, this is witchcraft, <laughs> but it's wow. it's behind wow. the scenes. So as yeah. everybody's jumping up and down and dancing and they're all singing and, and, and stuff like that, the reality is behind the scenes, this is happening. The other thing that happens is uh, in, in every period in the year, about, th about a month or month, two months, yeah. The local uh, witch doctor or, or local religious person who's an, uh, not of Christianity but polytheism or something will come to your church and say, mm -hmm. right, you've not got, you can't play your drums, you can't play your music. Wow. Because our gods are asleep. They want to rest. 
and we don't want them to be waking up. So for about a month or more, all the churches in Ghana have to be quiet for this season. You know, I, I honestly, this is absolutely. I do not even. I don't even understand what 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 does that mean. Have you spoken to my brother Latte? I fo I phoned Samuel up, Sa Samuel, but I didn't get him. I didn't get him. I left the message. Yeah. One. So okay, you didn't get him. Okay, you left a message because yeah. I don't know. I would like him to know <laughs> if he knows this is happening. Honest to God, because there are there is a very strong pastoral, African pastoral, Ghanaian pastoral in, in the Manchester. And yeah. I would like them to connect with you, okay? Yeah. I would really yeah. like them to know that you are here and I'm going to try and organize something before you go, amen? Okay. I pray amen. Because they, seem, they need to know about this. They need to know what's going on. Because mm. if they don't know, I, I don't know what else to do. They need to know. And so coming back to the topic of discipleship, mm. We were saying at the beginning, for those who just joined us, we we're saying that it's not about having a certificate. It's not about um, what you can get from God. Mm. When Jesus calls you, he calls you to leave all mm. and follow him. Mm. The story back of uh, the story of the young rich ruler that you read, he didn't get what Jesus said correctly. <laughs> Jesus said, and you will have treasures in heaven. All he heard was give up everything. Mm. But it, because he loved the treasure, he loved what he had. But he didn't know that Jesus was saying there's a bank in heaven. There's a treasure in heaven, real treasure that does not get corrupt. He didn't he missed that. And he went away sorrowful. And this is it. So what I want to comment on this is this. There's a difference between you having stuff. And there's different that stuff having you. Yeah. Whatsoever you cannot live without controls you. One of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. You need to be controlled and led and guided by the Holy Spirit. So if the stuff that you have possess you, you, you are in a deep trouble. Go yeah. ahead, brother. Well, that, that leads on to two, two scriptures, if we could go to it. Absolutely. Uh, Ephesians 2 3. So this, yeah. this leads on from what you're saying. So absolutely when when we are disciples, we're we're coming into we're leaving the kingdom of darkness and we're going into the kingdom of the sun. And that's what we're just gonna major on because yeah. of what you just said about so uh Ephesians 2 3. Uh Ephesians uh 2 verse 3. It says, among whom also we had all our conversations in time past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you were saved. You could also read for a further study Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 and 19, which talks about being rooted in Christ. But the point that I want to just share, which jumps on, on what you just said, Joseph. Yeah, please, please. There's no, there's no three types of Christianity. There's the idea that there are these passionate on fire Christians. Then there are these kind of people who, who are missionaries and pastors. And then there's us in the middle who can just chill out and just try, like, coast along. No, there's only two, two ways to go. Either you're in the kingdom of darkness or you're in the kingdom of the sun. And so the question is for you today, which kingdom are you in? Are you in the kingdom of the darkness or are you in the kingdom of the sun? If you're in the kingdom of the sun, you've got to start bearing fruit. You've got to start living it, as my brother keeps saying. Um, Colossians chapter 113, you've got Galatians, uh, what's Galatians chapter 5? Brother, what is, what's the verse now? I can't remember. You know, the fruits of the spirit. Uh, Galatians, Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 yeah so, so I'm going to I'm going to go there quickly brother why are you going to Colossians okay okay so because this is good so that people know our brother and sister know that we're giving because this is a teaching session we're not preaching so we're giving all the scriptures that are needed so that they can have references we know here to give our opinion hallelujah amen Colossians 1 13 it says notice darkness and the sun you're from darkness to the sun look 
in whom you have delivered us from the part of darkness and had mm. translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So uh, whatever issues you're facing, whatever problems you're facing, the mm. reason why you're facing those issues is because you've not understood where you are. You're no longer in the kingdom of darkness. You're in the kingdom of his son. So you have to walk in that kingdom. You have to walk in that, in that under the kingship and in the power mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. And, it, and, and there's no middle ground. There's no uh, middle ground to play with. You're either one or the other. End of. End of. And it says, it says clearly about walking. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. You see? We are, we are in danger of losting at any given time. Within 24 hours, it's easy for us to lose. Now, guess what? Paul now comes and gives us an advice. Walk in the Spirit. What does it mean to walk in the Spirit? A lot of my brothers think to walk in the Spirit means to, to speak in tongues mm. or to go to church. To walk in the Spirit is simple. It's to walk in obedience of the Word of God. Because the, the word of God, <laughs> hallelujah, the Holy Spirit inspired the disciples to write the words. The, Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. To Amen. walk in the spirit is to walk in the obedience of the words of Jesus Christ. Number one. Number two, my brother mentioned that already. The first scripture I read in, in Luke. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the thing that I told you to do? Mm. And that's the principle. So to walk in the spirit is not being out of control. It's not falling down. It's not speaking in tongues. It's got nothing to do with it. Uh, I, just, I want to put this again. I'm inserting this. When you are born of the spirit of God, the result is not speaking in tongues. Though speaking in tongues is necessary. When you are born of the Spirit of God, the result is not being religious or go to church. When you are born of the Spirit of God, is that you bear the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. These are the evidence of a new birth. That Jesus said, uh, we will know them by their fruit. Not by their power, not by their might, not by anything else. I really wanted to insert that. Out. I hope you don't mind, brother, okay? It's good, because that's what I'm getting to. That's what Absolutely. I'm I'm so I'm going to read the, the Galatians now. So walk in the spirit so you don't fulfill the loss of the flesh. For the, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. Why? So that you do not do the things that you wish. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then he comes and says, verse 22, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, gentleness, peace, kindness, goodness, faith, Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, or temperance. Against such, there is no law. And, verse 24, And the, those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with his passion and his lust. So, mm. if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Go ahead, brother. We've just got a few scriptures now. This is going to, this this dovetails into exactly what you just said. Boom. Now, what I'm about to just share now fits perfectly in what you just said. If we just go to three script, three or four scriptures, and and it will just magnify what you said. John Amen. 13, 34 and thirty-five. Yeah, I, I could pick that one up. Which one else do you have? Uh, John. So are you getting that one? Are you getting John yeah. 13, 34, 35? And I'll get 1 John chapter 2. So so let's go. John 13, guys, thank you. John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Why? By this, all will know, all will know, all will know, that you are my disciple. If you have love for one another. Hallelujah. Go ahead, brother. So what you just said, number one, it's a command. It's not just a mystical, airy-fairy, gooey-gooey thing. It's an obedience. It's not a suggestion. It's not a suggestion. It's an obedience. Uh, yeah. Secondly, it, we're, we're known 
by our actions not we can speak in tongues all day we can say we're we're, we're the reformed baptist or whatever all day no we, the, you know you, the, the, they know that we are true disciples by our actions by our love for one another and for those around us uh mm -hmm. one john chapter 2 verse 10 and 11. Mm -hmm. hallelujah one john chapter 2 verse 10 and 11 says he that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is no occasion of stumbling in him but he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walk and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because the darkness have blinded his eyes come one, on come on one john chapter 3 14 one john Hallelujah. 3 14 it says we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren he that loveth not his brother abide in death one john chapter 4 verse seven and eight yes it says beloved let us love one another for love is of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love so love isn't just turning up and saying i love your brother love is real commitment real love is yeah. love is 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 don't just give a tract we give tracts i give tracts to people I, I preach and I give tracts. I believe in that. But if you're not willing to give yourself, then it's it's pointless. Are you willing to give yourself? Are you willing to go to your neighbor and not just give them a tract, which is important, they need to be told, but they need to see that you're demonstrating the message that you're giving. Are you giving Hallelujah. Yourself? Hallelujah. You see, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5, it says, Paul was saying to them that they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to the missions, just as God wanted them to do. And this is this is this is absolutely perfect what you just said. It's not about dropping something in a box of the offering. No, it's not about clocking in and clocking out. No, this is not about attending church. This is by being what you believe. This is by because hallelujah, hallelujah. When you do the first commandment, love your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, all your soul, there's nothing left. Because guess what? When you give your heart to God, you give him everything. When you say, I gave my heart to the Lord, you give him everything. Why? In, Corinth, in, Reve in, Corinth, in Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 9, he says, if you believe in your heart, you have to believe in your heart. So that's why I say, I gave my heart to God. Now, if you give your heart to God, guess what happened? Uh, Psalm 37, verse 4 and 5 says what? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, what would be the desires of your heart? It would be the desires that God would put in. Mm. Because your desire will be his desires. Mm. You see, there's no self-centeredness anymore. There's no selfishness anymore. Because mm. my people, those who know me, will know this. The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is selfishness. Mm. Mm. It's self-centeredness. Because when you love, you give. When you love, you do something outside of yourself. Mm. You think about a person. You think about the object that you love. You talk about it all day. Mm. But when you when you are self-centered, it's all about me, myself, and I. God mm. bless me. God loves me. It's all about me. It's, and in the natural, oh, they've done this to me. It's all about me-centered gospel. And that's where the prosperity gospel is focused on. Mm. They talk about God blessing them. When Ephesians 1 says, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Amen. They created, they're making, a, they're making you be discontent. Mm, mm, mm. So God hasn't really done the work properly. You still need to be blessed, brother. You still need, so basically, so it, they create a want in you. It's a, it's a marketing process. I went to yeah. Middlesex University, I did marketing. Yeah. They make you want something. They make, they create a, uh, you know, a dissatisfaction in yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you see, yeah. so that you begin to want the blessings of God. But we know Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom and all the things will be added to you. So you don't seek the things you seek first. Yeah, you amen, focus first amen. on the kingdom. 
And really, guys, we are sorry if we're really passionate about this. We have to unpack this. And I thank God, guys, for my brother, uh, Jason, who is with us tonight. This is the part two of the 10 series that we have. We do, every, we do this every night, if God's will, at 9 o'clock. Guys, tomorrow we shall continue. But I want you to know that this is serious. This is for those of you who are bored. You don't know your Christianity is your building, church, and then home, and that's all. We want to challenge you, not because we have arrived. We have a little bit of experience because we are living what we talk about. I'm about to go to Africa. You're going back. You're going to Africa soon. But, and by the way, I thank God for all of you who are supporting us, who are supporting me. Continue to support us as we go, like we said just on yesterday. There are those who go. There are those who pray. There are those who support those who go. Amen? Mm -hmm. So continue to do that. We thank you very much. So as we continue, my brother, do you have any other scriptures for us? Uh, just just one last one, brother, and that's John Absolutely. 17. John 17, 26, which rounds off like what, what you've said, what, what, what I've been saying. And, yeah. Uh, John 17, 26 says, And I have declared unto them that thy name, then, uh, sorry, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare <laughs> it. And then he says, That the love wherein thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. So this love, it is 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 a trinitarian love the love that the father has for the son it, it he wants it in us the holy spirit wants to develop it in us so this love has got to be a higher love in the world that we share it's mm -hmm. got to be a love that people see you know what they've got something that i haven't got i got converted in prison in strange ways because i saw a chaplain no proctor i knew that he had love in him that i i was of another world and so wow. they, we need to commune with God. And, 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 and like you said, if we have this desire for God, it will impact us. It will change us. But mm -hmm. to challenge that your home, your house, should yes. be the house of God, to share the love of God. Your car should be there to share the love of God. Your, your, your bank balance should be there to share the love of God. Your, everything that you're doing, it, there should be love oozing out of what, Every resource and everything you have, and until and, and, and until we get back to this, it's all going to be selfishness. It's all going to be. But when we get radical and, and start to live this, things will change not only in our own lives but will change in our churches. Many of you are praying for a change in your churches. You change your your own trajectory about love and communion with God, and that will change your church. God will bless your church through through seeing you. So an example is. For example, uh, someone moves into the community. They've only mm -hmm. moved, just moved in. They've got a house. They, they moved there. And a lady turns up next door with some coffee and donuts and says, I, I know you've been working all day, putting in the uh, chairs and everything in the house, and you've been decorating. I thought I'd just give you uh, some donuts and the coffee. It, 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 it's demonstrating real practical love to people. Amen. Amen. It's absolutely true. And uh, because you see, love, uh, just as a breaking news as we close, because I want, I would like to close when I finish this point. Breaking news, guys. Every fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22 is practical. I can't cut you open to see love. Mm. But I see what you do. That proves to me you have love. Mm. I can't cut you open to see patience and kindness and long-suffering and faith. But I have to see your actions. That proves to me because faith is evidence. You see, if you want patience, God will send you somebody who is impatient so you can practice. If you want long suffering, if you, anything that you think you want, God will send you an obnoxious person around. He will put you into a situation so you can practice what you believe. Yes, you have to become what you believe. Yes, you have to be the change you want to see. And that is essential for everything that we do. Nothing about Christianity is passive. It's active. Love is active. Mm -hmm. You have to do something. God so loved, we didn't know about it until he gave. Amen? He gave his only begotten son. And because he gave, and the son gave himself, 
is life for life. Mm -hmm. in, in, one, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 14, 15, 16, it says it clearly. If one died, then all died. Okay? It's life for life. So guys, the, the call to mission, the call to discipleship, we're doing it in a series. We really thank you guys. Uh, we're going to continue tomorrow at 9 o'clock. We'll be posting the, the poster for tomorrow, for the topic that we're discussing tomorrow. We really want you to participate. Send us questions. Again, the disclaimer is this. The reason we talk about it is not because we have arrived. No. Mm. The reason we talk about this is to create a stir in your spirit mm. because we have been stirred by somebody else. You see, we're standing on heavy shoulders, on the shoulders of the A.W. Tozer, the Reverend, uh, uh, Reverend Hill, the, the people who have gone before us. If they had kept silence, if they have stopped, we wouldn't have known a lot of these things. If the 12 apostles have stopped at the beginning, we wouldn't have been saved. So somebody is waiting for, for your obedience. Somebody somewhere is waiting on your obedience to preach the word to them. So please, my brothers and sisters, we want to stir you up all in love. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So that you can be stirred to do something that you never done before. Amen. Go ahead, brother. If you can do, be, make the last point and then close in prayer for us, please. I, I just have one point. And it, Go ahead. It's a radical point. If you don't love the brethren, if you don't love the brethren, you are not saved. Boom. <laughs> you don't love the Be brethren, you're not saved. Read that scripture in 1 John again. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. If you haven't got any love for your people, yes, you are not born again. Yeah. Because where there is, where there is true spiritual life, true being truly born again, there's real love. That's why when the Wesley movement started, John Wesley's movement, the Methodists, they had the love feast and uh, they had the, the communion and they had a meal together. But it was said of them that look at these Methodists, how they love each other. When the yeah. church started in the first 300 years, it, it conquered the known world, yes, by the power of the Holy Spirit, but by the testimony of the church because they said, look how these Christians love each other. So we need the power of the Spirit. We need to move in the things of the Holy Spirit, but at the end of the day, if we have no love, we're nothing. Hallelujah. May God bless you, my brother. If you could just pray in closing for us. Uh, we have a few comments uh, just to finish uh, while you, you're getting ready to pray for us. Rock Solid 4 says that if the Lord comes back and you got 25,000 in your bank, how are you going to feel? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because you didn't go into missions. Hallelujah. Or you didn't support anybody. Uh, Bonnie, you know, talks about looking, lingering, and losting because we talked about loss. Mm -hmm. um, we have a strong tower fellowship. They say they're buzzing, basically. It's, it's a real McCoy. Uh, Dennis Alita, uh, on their behalf. Uh, rock solid, great tag team effort. You guys are great together. Hallelujah. And on and on and on. Uh, strong tower will be back tomorrow. Our sister Karen. Hallelujah, my sister. Let's meet tomorrow. We have our Bible study tomorrow. Let me know if it's 12 o'clock or 3 o'clock. I will be with you, my brother. Go. Thank you. Amen. Father, we come before you today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we don't want these just to be words or just teaching. We want it to be a reality in our lives. So, Lord, help us to submit to your Lordship in every department of our life. Cut away that which is not pleasing to you. Cut it out of our lives, Lord, whatever it takes. And, Father, we pray for real practical love, your love for people, Lord. Lord, may it not just be words, may it not just be feelings, but help us to have genuine compassion and a genuine love for your people and for those who are needy. Give us your heart, Lord. Please, Lord, don't let us leave tonight superficial Christians dancing and singing, but there's no real action in our life. We want to be real, Lord, so help us to be real and help us to manifest your kingdom 
in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you guys for being patient with us. My brother, I'll see you tomorrow by his grace. God amen. Bless you, bro. God bless you. Thank you. Take care, bro. Bye-bye.